And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Tuesday, April 30th, the last day of April. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, it makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So with that being said, let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So we're going to start off the show. We're going to talk about Travis Kelsey getting a contract extension that now makes him currently the highest paid tight end in the NFL and well-deserved. I will also add to that. Then we'll also talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Well, we'll also talk about the Chiefs uh, draft draft class and what they did. But then the second uh, part of the show, we'll talk about the Dallas Cowboys. They brought back Ezekiel Elliott on a one-year deal. And that was something that was kind of brewing from after the draft. Uh, they met again last week, and they were getting closer and closer to reaching a deal, and it eventually happened. So they bring him back into the fold. So we'll talk about that, as well as what the Cowboys did with their draft as well. Then in the third part of the show, we'll talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and what they did with their draft, as well as the Jets in the final part of the show as well. So... Four more teams. We'll talk about their drafts. Uh, again, I want to try to at least get to every team and what they did with their drafts. But, I mean, th there's different ways that I could do that. But this is kind of how we're doing it, at least for, for now. So, um, and tomorrow, the NFL.com uh, NFL NFL came out with more power rankings. So, I was going to go over those uh, tomorrow and give you my thoughts. The uh, post-draft power rankings so let's get into the first part of the show which is talking about Travis Kelsey signing a contract extension so it's a two-year extension and uh, the specifics of the deal um, it's worth a uh, 34.25 million dollars making him the highest paid tight end in the league on an annual basis and like I said he deserves that. The deal effectively gives Kelsey a $4 million raise in 2024 with an with an average annual salary of about $17 million. And Kelsey has been consistent. If there's one thing you could say about Travis Kelsey is that he's been consistent. And over 11 NFL seasons, he has accumulated 907 receptions over 11,000 receiving yards, and 74 touchdowns, earning nine Pro Bowl nods and four first-team All-Pro selections. And, again, like I said, has been consistent his, pretty much his whole career. And last year, it was a little bit of a struggle for him. He dealt with some injuries throughout the season, and many people thought this is the beginning of the end for Travis Kelsey. But once we got to the playoffs, that was not the case. That was not the case because he played really well, played well in the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs once again reached the mountaintop and won their second straight Super Bowl. And now they're looking to three-peat. And what have I talked about a couple times this offseason? Is... Any like you know talking about Patrick Mahomes and how oh Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey at some point they're going to be leaving well oh well, Travis Kelsey got a two year extension and right now I think he's I think he's thirty four so this would take him to when he's thirty six so and that could very well be the end after that after this contract is up so yeah Travis Kelsey is thirty four he's going to be thirty five. In October so yeah I mean after this contract he might he might hang it up but we'll see we'll see but like I said when I've been talking about Mahomes I'm like at some point Travis Kelsey's not gonna be there Andy Reid's not gonna be there well Travis Kelsey now signed a two-year extension before that and I and I covered this last week Andy Reid signed a contract extension I'll take him to 2029 so they're not going anywhere yet so, the Chiefs, 
and, and Mahomes, they're, they're not going to have to worry about these guys leaving at the moment. And going into 2024, what's the expectation? It's, it's for them to get back to the Super Bowl and try to win it again. And a lot of people, and probably myself too, are probably just going to pencil them in as being the team to come out of the AFC. Now, there's a few other teams that have the potential to knock them off. But for me, I can't do it. I can't do it. Because when you look at last year and how they struggled offensively, and I was one of those people that said, yeah, I don't think they're going back to the Super Bowl. This is somebody else's year. And despite that, and the drops at receiver and Kelsey being banged up, it didn't matter. Because once we got to the playoffs, this team turned it around. They flipped that switch, and they were off and running. Beat the Dolphins, went on the road, beat the Bills, beat the Ravens, and then you beat the 49ers in overtime in the Super Bowl. And you capture another Super Bowl championship. And now going into this year, they should be better on offense. Now, again, we still got to see how this whole Rashi Rice situation plays out. But the Chiefs have addressed the wide receiver position. You bring in Marquise Brown into the fold. You draft Xavier Worthy, which... Many people aren't happy with the Bills that they allowed this to happen by trading with the Chiefs, a team that constantly beats you in the playoffs, and you let them move up and take somebody that maybe you should have took. Now, the Bills ended up taking uh, Keon Coleman with um, with their selection to get a wide receiver. So they did. So they did address the receiver position, but I mean, you let the Chiefs move up to take a receiver. People weren't too thrilled about that. So I did kind of want to go through the Chiefs draft as well because I, again, really only went through the first night. But I wanted to... So we'll look at Xavier Worthy's stats. Wide receiver out of Texas. So these are his college stats here as I pull them up. So in three seasons with Texas, the first year, 62 receptions, 981 yards, and 12 touchdowns. Then year two in 2022, 60 receptions, 760 yards, and nine touchdowns. And then career high in receiving yards and receptions, 75 receptions, 1,000 yards, 1,014 yards, and five touchdowns. So the touchdowns were lower, but... Still, um, an impressive college career for him. And now he's going to be playing with Patrick Mahomes. And he's one of the fastest players in the league. And you see what he, you saw what he did at the Combine. So you add that with this offense to go along with Marquise Brown. The Chiefs are going to get back to, you would think, getting back to those explosive plays down the field, like with Tyreek Hill back in the day. And if that's the case you know, the NFL's in trouble. Because if the Chiefs had those explosive plays back, then it's going to be even harder to stop them. So that was what the Chiefs did with their first pick. They also did draft an offensive tackle. They drafted a Kingsley Suamataya uh, out of BYU in the second round. Um, they took uh, Jared Wiley, a tight end, out of TCU. Uh, in the fourth round. So, again, that's, you know, for depth. I mean, again, Travis Kelsey just signed a two-year extension. So, you know. But, again, the Chiefs like their tight ends, and they want to have depth at that position. Uh, they did also take a safety. They took a center. They took uh, Jaden Hicks out of Washington State. Also in the fourth round, uh, they took Hunter uh, Norzad from Penn State, a center. Uh, they took another corner. Uh, Kamal Hayden, that was in the sixth round. And then they took uh, C.J. Hansen, 
uh, a guard from Holy Cross in the seventh round. So you see some offensive linemen that they drafted, which, again, you can never have too many linemen. That's a position that you want to have a lot of depth at, and especially when you have a franchise guy in Patrick Mahomes that you want to protect. And the Chiefs did a great job after the Bucks destroyed them in the Super Bowl. They they revamped that offensive line in one offseason. And, yeah, they got to the AFC Championship game and lost to the Bengals, but then they won two straight Super Bowls after that. So, And, again, I, I've said this before. The Chiefs rebuilt their offensive line in one offseason, where it's taken other teams years, years, to get their offensive line right. And they still haven't gotten it right. And I'm referring to my team, but hopefully this year that's not the case and the offensive line will be solid from day one. But again, I'm not an ex- I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert on the guys that the Chiefs drafted. But you see the offensive linemen, you see they drafted some defensive backs because you know they did lose Legarius Sneed. They they had to trade him and and that's a, that's a tough piece to lose on the defensive side of the ball. But I said it even before they traded him, that the Chiefs are one of those well-run organizations where they'll figure it out. And the main priority for them, the bigger or the bigger priority, was to bring back Chris Jones and make sure that he's on the team. That would have been the bigger loss if he ended up going elsewhere and they weren't able to come to an agreement on a long-term extension. But they got him back. So they unfortunately had to part ways with Legereus Sneed. And yeah, they, they didn't want to do that, but that's the business. And they, they unfortunately had to do that. So, but like I said, with the offensive line, it's for depth. Again, you got your receiver. So you got to like what the Chiefs did with their draft. At least, you know, adding depth to the offensive line. Xavier Worthy is now one of the fastest players in the NFL. I'm excited to see what this offense can do now next year. Because now you got two speedsters in Marquise Brown and Xavier Worthy. Travis Kelsey's hopefully healthy. You got Pacheco coming out of the backfield. Let's see what this offense can do. Let's see what they could do. I mean, I, I think they're going to be... It, it's going to definitely be better than 2023. But again... Even when they struggled, they still ended up winning the Super Bowl. So, looking forward to see what they end up doing in 2024. Uh, They did also bring in uh, an undrafted free agent, uh, Curtis Jacobs, a linebacker, uh, as well. I just wanted to bring that up. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think about what the Chiefs did with their draft. Uh, How would you grade it? Again... Like I said, adding depth to the offensive line, getting your receiver, that was important. And I expect the defense to still, you know, be like they were in 2023. They were a solid unit, and I think that'll continue next year. So, yeah, I, I mean, the, the Chiefs did did a good job. So, and, and again, they, uh, they signed their tight end to a two-year extension, so he's not going anywhere just yet. And, of course, you still got Patrick Mahomes, who is the best quarterback in the NFL currently. So, But, yeah, let me know what you guys think about what the Chiefs did. And with that being said now, we're going to take our first break of the show. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the Dallas Cowboys, them bringing back an old friend in Ezekiel Elliott. And I'll talk about that and what the Cowboys did with their draft as well. So... With that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast.